testosterone goes up, DHT and estradiol plateau, and they can't go up any further. So this is what confuses men. It's the misinformation that comes from the bodybuilding world and why they do what they do. Men, first of all, once again, forget that testosterone works through its active metabolites. It doesn't work just as testosterone. Okay, it, works, it has a direct pathway where it does work just as testosterone. That's on muscle tissue. But all your other tissues, your brain, your bones, your heart, your blood vessels, your sexual organs, it has to be converted into its active metabolites. And, and the diversification pathway is when it's converted into estradiol. It diversifies testosterone's actions. And the amplification pathway is where it's converted into DHT. Bodybuilders use aromatase inhibitors and things like that to increase free testosterone levels because the way testosterone acts on skeletal muscle is different than the way these active metabolites act in the brain process. So it acts directly on muscle tissue and with increasing levels of androgens, the androgen receptor is upregulated. So there's no saturation point that we have found yet. And it doesn't require an enzyme to act directly. It just acts as testosterone. So there's no enzyme saturation. So you can continue to increase lean muscle mass, strength, with increasing levels of testosterone and other androgens, even though they will have no further effect on symptomatic improvement. That's an important point to point out. A bodybuilder at a level of 10 or 20,000 feels no better than you or I do, maybe worse. So the real question to get back to your original question, to circle back, then what is that saturation point from a clinical standpoint? Mm -hmm. That's going to depend on who you ask. If you were asked somebody like Peter Atiyah, who did a video uh, on testosterone or several of them recently, he will say that when my patients get a level of 700, if they're not feeling any better, not doing any better, then I'll discontinue testosterone. I would fully disagree. Once again, if you were to ask me, where do I see the majority of men significantly improve clinically? It's the free testosterone around 30 to 60 nanograms per deciliter or so. Those are the levels where I see the greatest improvement in symptoms and every parameter of health that I can measure improves. So this typically correlates with a total testosterone level, of course, between one and 2000. We said this before. Now, some men are fine with levels less than that. Some men may require a little bit more 